Hello guys, it's Carbot Rhino and welcome to one more plate, right? In today's video, we're gonna preview Forest of Rat Ghost, a new cooperative storytelling adventure that is soon coming to Kickstarter. The story in Forest of Rat Ghost starts with a boy and a girl asleep inside a boat. When the current took the boat deep into the forest through the dangerous river, it got smashed against the coastline. They are now lost inside the forest that no man enters, as the forest is home to 20 mythical creatures. Players need to work together, go into the forbidden forest, find the kids and bring them safely back to the village. So the game has a very fairy tale like feel and it's based on fantasy role-playing games. It transmits the feeling of being lost inside the forest and you explore its hidden creatures, you may take actions as a group, and most of all, you get to learn about Slavic mythology. The game narrates unknown Slavic tales and myths, and everything in it has its own meaning, and crossroads are like metaphors of the choices you'll be making, and all the topology in the map is carefully drawn and thought of according to the mythology. Let's move on to how the game plays, and we'll get back to my thoughts on the game. First of all, as you can see, this is very much a prototype. You can see that a lot of stuff are homebrew and of course the quality is going to be very different in the final version of the game. We have the board with several paths. We see the children are set in this location and there is one more starting location depending on if you want a shorter or a longer game. We have set up the 20 creatures randomly apart from these three and here we'd place the miniatures of each one of them which will look like this one, Lesnik the protector and master of the forest. The game plays with three or more players. If you are four players then one player takes on moving the children whereas with three players the children stay put. We have a gorgeous book of encounters with all the creatures, each with different outcomes and stories. And we've got a time counter. There's also various decks of cards that add to the replayability. This is more like the final quality of them when the game reaches production. And we've got some dice. The basic mechanics are simple and straightforward. You start in the day phase, but after completing that many encounters, you move on to the evening phase, and then you go into the night phase when the creatures start moving. In the day phase, the heroes roll two dice to move in the forest, one for the number of steps and the other for the direction you should take in a crossroad. You always have the option to explore by taking a random white deck card and keeping it, if you want, placing it in your bag which has limited capacity. If there is an encounter in your way, it stops your movement and before you can see what creature it is, you must choose one of the four available actions run, hide, fight or communicate. Then you reveal the creature and go to the book of encounters. Apart from the backstory of each creature, it has a threshold for each successful action for the encounter and its outcome depending also sometimes on whether it's day or night or the location of the hero and there's also the outcomes if it's unsuccessful. Among the outcomes is that you may have some actions locked so you have to later on get them unlocked to use them, you may lose your bag or even your freedom. To determine the outcome you compare the threshold with that on your hero's character sheet. Which brings us to the heroes. What I really like about this game is that you can choose a hero of any age and build, like for example this sweet grandma. Each character has different starting stats and a bag to place stuff. Also, each hero gets a personal mission that gives them an optional goal to achieve based on their character. One important aspect in the game is that you can move as a group. This is a free choice for each of the players and the speed of the group is determined by the slowest member of the group using the appropriate dice. Each ability or action in the group has a way to be calculated according to this. Along the game you will develop your character, you will collect items, you will gain skills, uh, you will separate from the group or rejoin them and possibly discover why the druid chose you to join the search party. In the game when you have successfully encountered a creature, you place the token and mini of that creature on the time counter. After seven successful encounters, the day ends and we move on to the evening. You mix the tokens of creatures on the time counter and tokens of close creatures on the board and randomly place them on crossroad fields along with the 21st creature, Radgost, the Slavic god of hospitality. 
The evening lasts for three successful encounters and then we move on to the night. At night, the heroes stop and do not make moves anymore, but you move the creatures instead. First, you turn over the creature tokens that are on the crossroads and place their corresponding minis. You roll the 20-sided die to indicate which one of the creatures moves. The same player rolls the 10-sided die and the direction die and performs the creature's movement. If there is no encounter, the next player rolls the d20 to see which creature moves next, and so on. If there is a creature and hero encounter, the heroes can only choose hide and fight from their actions, and you compare the values of the creatures and the heroes for the outcomes as normal. We may also very well have creature and creature encounter. The stronger creature, the one with the higher ordinal number, will win the encounter and you place the weaker one on the time counter. The game can last one more day after the night phase and it ends once the children and all search team members return to the village. So this was Forest of Rat Ghost. The story behind the game is that it was initiated six years ago by the designer and his son as a sweet family project to teach him about Slavic mythology and I think the love and the dedication really shows. I'm also a fan of mythology in general as it always revolves around archetypical stuff rooted deep in our psychology. So it's a rich game in terms of stories and the focus is on the togetherness of the shared experience and on the stories. So it's very easy to get on board and start playing without having to read too many rules. Also, players can join in at any point during the game and it's a very kid-friendly game as there is no killing and no violence. And there is many layers to it as you discover more and more about the forest, the myths and the tales. So that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll have the link of the Kickstarter campaign in the description below when the project goes live in order for you to have a look at it and I'll see you in the next video.